Um, this is a, a, a beginning, the first section of a short story uh, in this book called You Want More. That's a hardback. It's got a lot of dogs on it. And this is a dog story called Vaccination. It's just the first section. My dog, Tapeworm Johnson, needed legitimate veterinary attention. It had been two years since she received annual shots. I read somewhere that an older dog can overdose on all these vaccinations. And I have found, I share this information with every dog owner I meet, that if you keep your pet away from rabid foxes, raccoons, skunks, bats, and people whose eyes rotate crazy in their sockets, then the chances of your own dog foaming at the mouth diminish drastically. I also believe that dogs don't need microchips embedded beneath their shoulder blades if you keep the dog leashed or in the house or with the truck windows rolled up when you drive around showing the dog farm animals living in pastures. I brought this up to Dr. Page one time back four years earlier when Tapeworm Johnson was somewhere between eight and nine years old. Tapeworm showed up at my door one morning back when I was married and living in a regular house her ribs as visible as anything you'd order down at Clem and Lida's Barbecue Shack off Scenic Highway 11. Her paw pads split open from, I assumed, days traveling from wherever her conscienceless owner dropped her off. Tapeworm looked coon or bird dog mostly, though she'd never pointed over the years I've known her, which might explain a stupid hunter letting her loose without a collar and so on. Seeing as nothing seemed hopeful in the marriage, I let the dog inside, took her to Dr. Page's ex-colleague, Dr. Lloyd Leck, who overdosed on horse tranquilizers a while back, though people in the community say they were only ostrich tranquilizers, seeing as Dr. Leck dealt with the more entrepreneurial ranchers who'd moved in to raise emus, llamas, and the like. And Dr. Leck said the dog had tapeworms. When I had signed in, I put Jane Doe down for Tapeworm Johnson's name. When we scheduled a second visit for, for a month later so the dog could put on weight and get vaccinated for diseases I felt sure got made up by either the American Veterinary Association or the dog pill and serum manufacturers of the United States, I told the vet to put down tapeworm for a name. What the hell? There are worse possible names. The dog could have been diagnosed with some kind of block urethra or mange. I have a medical doctor I call Bob. I have an ophthalmologist I call Henry. There's a chiropractor who lives a mile down the road from me in one of those fake log houses built from a kit. I call him Snap, Snap Crackle Pop when I come across him at the barbecue shack. I refer to professors as teachers, which seems to piss them off. I went to college with our governor and I call him Fuck Twig now, just as I did back then. So in case anyone thinks I disparage veterinarians, who have to know all the bones of about every animal ever invented, not just the 206 of humans, understand that I called Dr. Page, Dr. Page, and before he couldn't take it anymore and offed himself with giant bird tranquilizers, I called Dr. Leck, Dr. Leck. Tapeworm got out of my truck without any aid and she led me to the clinic's door. One woman sat in the wait waiting room. She said, look, Loretta, you have a friend. Look at the pretty doggy in a high-pitched voice normally used by mothers talking to nonverbal babies or school nurses to special ed first graders who shit their pants and wish they hadn't. We have a lot of problems these days, and I think that making it a felony to speak in such a manner might eradicate gun violence in the future. When I signed in, I looked down to read Holly for the owner's name and Loretta for her dog. Under reason for visit, Holly had written toenails. Under Tapeworm's reason for visit, I wrote down, change oil filter. I figured someone later would see it and then ask Dr. Page if she could check the Jack Russell's oil. I felt Tapeworm tugging toward Loretta, and when the two dogs' noses touched, they wagged their tails. Holly said, see, they can be friends. I said, that's good. Holly said, Janie said she's running late. She's back there in surgery. Somebody's dog got shot in the eye. Can you imagine? Janie said it's an emergency that she's going to have to amputate the eye. Holly looked normal and friendly enough. She might have been late 30s and wore hippie clothing that somehow matched, a thin cotton lavender skirt, a black and gray tie-dyed sleeveless blouse, those sandals that cost way too much money because they supposedly offer arch support.
if I ever met a podiatrist, I think I'd call him or her soul brother or soul sister like that. I didn't think amputate was the correct term for an eyeball, but I didn't say anything. Holly wasn't wearing a brassiere. She didn't shave her armpits, which didn't bother me, seeing as the majority of women living on this planet, contrary to popular American Christian, Christian belief, didn't shave anywhere, just like most men. Holly had her hair braided three times and long pigtails, which made me scared she might have been one of those second ready people who'd moved into the area, ready in a second for the second coming. I figured a second ready woman might keep three braids in homage to the Trinity. Homage might not be the correct term. For some reason, I said, I've known one-eyed dogs and they get around, get around fine. They adapt. I sat down on the bench perpendicular to Holly. Our dogs continued to be friendly. I'm Holly, and this is Loretta, she said. Hey, Holly, I'm Edward Johnson. This is Wanda. Who's going to tell a brawless woman you got a dog named Tapeworm? Wanda was my ex-wife's name. I've ne never seen you here, Holly said. You look like a level-headed person, and I'm always on the lookout for level-headed people. By level-headed, I mean people who love animals and maybe don't record reality TV shows to watch over and over. I thought about fake speaking in tongues, but the last time I'd done that as a joke, somebody called 911 and said I underwent an epileptic seizure. This happened at a hardware store when, employee, when an employee told me if God wanted a nut and bolt to rust together beyond loosening, then I should not interfere with WD-40. I said it would be a kind of a coincidence if you and I came into a vet clinic at the same time more than once. Holly said, Ed or Eddie? or Edward all the time. I said Edward all the time. I didn't say how Wanda wasn't Wanda all the time. I kind of daydreamed way ahead to Holly calling for tapeworm, Wanda, 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 come here, Wanda, and how I'd have to say how the dog must have lost her hearing. Holly slid over on her bench in my direction. Tapeworm began panting and then jumped up beside me. I looked over to the counter and wondered if Dr. Page no longer had a receptionist then figured that maybe she needed help in the surgery room. Holly said, Edward, one time I was with my boyfriend. I don't have a man in my life anywhere anymore, maybe because of what I'm about to tell you. And I called him Edward out of nowhere, just like in that Led Zeppelin song, you know, about calling out a different guy's name. I didn't even know anyone named Edward back then. Maybe I was having a vision about the future. She smiled. She said, I got a tattoo of two dung beetles going up the back of my thighs. Maybe one day I'll go to Africa and see some real ones. I made a mental note to open my dictionary to the non section when I got home. So maybe I'd finally learn the correct spelling of non sequitur. I said, I got a tattoo of a chameleon, but it keeps changing colors and blending right in with my skin. Dr. Page, maybe every veterinarian in the world, didn't have much taste or imagination in art. She'd gotten a new Norman Rockwell reproduction, her ninth, and it involved a dog and a little boy, just like the others. If I were a veterinarian, I would nail Jackson Pollock posters on the wall so people would think, well, at least my dog didn't look that bad after getting hit on the highway. There were also rows of Hummel-like dog figurines placed in a shallow figurine display case, dog fancy and bark magazines scattered about and a canine weight guide chart tacked to the door that led into the examination rooms. The TV remained tuned to Animal Planet, an upright plastic holder housed pamphlets for lost pet medical insurance. <coughs> Holly said, we should go out and get some coffee afterwards. We could drive over to Lorinda's diner. We could sit in the parking lot and let our dogs play together. I had work to do. I said, okay. She said, we should go out and get a drink. Holly looked at her wristwatch. I'll be in there five minutes. How long, how long will it take for Wanda? As long as she's not getting an operation, let's say 15 minutes. And then by the time we get to, say, Gus's place, it'll be 11. That's not too early. Gus lets dogs come inside. Dr. Page came out wearing a surgeon's shower cap. She said, hey, Edward. Hey, Tapeworm Johnson. She looked at Holly and said, come on back. Now, who is this one? Holly didn't say anything about the Tapeworm Johnson reference. She drug Lorette into the back. I stood up, 
let go of Tapeworm's leash and went outside to look in Holly's car. She drove a VW Bug, of course. She left the windows down, which meant, in my mind at least, it was okay for me to look in her backseat floorboard and glove compartment for pharmaceutical evidence in the way of lithium. I found dog hair. I'm no forensic e evidence expert, but I felt pretty sure that I discovered wiry white hair, long copper hair, short black hair, short gray hair, long liver colored hair, and so on. It didn't all come off of Loretta is what I'm saying. Did I want to spend an afternoon with a crazy dog woman? That was the question. I found Grateful Dead cassette tapes and CDs. At first I thought I discovered a roach in the ashtray, but upon smelling it, then eating it, I learned that more than likely it ended up being the remnants of a hand-rolled American spirit cigarette. Did I want to get involved in any way with a woman addicted to the evils of nicotine? Like I'd been addicted with cigarettes all the way up until the day after Wanda took off, leaving me alone with tapeworm. I wanted to find a grocery list, but didn't find one. I wanted to find a couple books. If she had a copy of Don Quixote, I'd have thought that I'd finally met my soulmate. If she had a number of those self-help books or memoirs written by the brainwashed cast of aliens involved in the Bush administration, I'd have known to have brought a wooden stake along with me to the bar. But I found no reading uh, material. Did I want to sit around in a bar with two dogs that might have been as literate as Holly? I got out of the Volkswagen, reached the veterinarian's front door, turned around, rolled the windows up all the way on my pickup, and locked both doors so no one could rifle through my belongings. When I got back inside the waiting room, I found Tapeworm stretched out on her back legs, eating all the free dog biscuits in a bowl between the registration ledger and a doorknob used to tether a dog. Tapeworm turned her head, kept her mouth open, and looked at me with bird dog eyes that said nothing but you caught me. I'm sorry, but this is who I am. I said, bad dog, Wanda. So that's that first section of that story.